Good evening, everyone. This is Bill Breeden. Welcome to Constellation Tour number 10. We're going to go over a relatively obscure constellation tonight, Leo Minor, or the Lesser Lion. Leo Minor is in the northern celestial hemisphere between Leo and Ursa Major. So we have our Stellarium software set up for March the 15th at 9 p.m. from mid uh, from mid northern latitudes, um, specifically St. Louis, at 38 degrees north latitude. So to, what you want to do to find Leo Minor is go outside and look in the spring months. Leo Minor is up and best visible between March and May. So in the spring, Leo, um, the greater lion, is rising in the east. So you want to start by finding by finding Leo. Leo is pretty easy to find. It's a major signpost of spring. So let's do that. We're looking east. And this bright star right here is Regulus. And you can see this this backward question mark shape here that's called the sickle and these stars here make up leo the lion let's have a look at the constellation markers and you can see that leo the lion is shown with this backward question mark or the sickle shape and this bright star here is alpha leonis or regulus Okay, now what about Leo Minor? Leo Minor is, it's, it's hard to see, but it's easy to find because it's between two, two easy to see markers in the sky. It's between Leo and the Big Dipper. So really all you do is look for the backward question mark and the Big Dipper and the, the small area of sky occupying the space between them is Leo Minor. Let's have a look at the boundaries and you can see the size of Leo Minor on the sky and it's just this little patch of sky here between Ursa Major and Leo. It's one of the smaller areas of sky. Let's have a look at the mythical characters. And you can see that Leo is a lion and Leo Minor is like a baby cub, a baby lion. So, and it's it's right under the feet of, of the great bear. And right at the tail of, of Lynx, which is another cat. So you have three cats here in the sky. You've got Lynx, Leo Minor, and Leo. Which is pretty cool. Okay, let's see if, let's do that again. Let's see if we can find Leo Minor. We're going to go outside in the spring and look east. And you're going to look for the sickle of Leo. Here's Regulus. And you're going to find the Big Dipper, which is here. And the, the area of sky between them is, is Leo Minor. Uh, even surprising to me that these two stars here are not part of of Leo Minor. They're actually part of Ursa Major. So when you're looking up in the sky at this section between Leo and Ursa Major, remember that these two stars here are, are actually outside of Leo Minor's boundaries. So it's more it's more above the sickle than over here underneath the dipper. So it's this area right here. There are no bright stars there. Well, it's a little obscure. So being such a small constellation, there there are no Messier objects in Leo. Let's let's go to a dark sky site. Let's make it dark.
And now you can clearly see the area where Leo Minor is. And that there are there isn't much there. So this is a good time for me to talk um, briefly about Messier objects. There, there are none in Leo Minor. But basically what, what Messier objects are, they're, they're very popular dark uh, deep sky objects with amateur astronomers. They, um, they're, most of them are bright enough to be accessible from, from a suburban backyard through a modest sized telescope. And Charles Messier was, a, was an 18th century astronomer and comet hunter. And he spent his nights searching for comets, sweeping the sky for comets. And every time he came across an object that looked like a faint fuzzy spot, but was not a comet, he would write them down in his journal and number them. And they, he considered them nuisance objects because they looked like a comet through his telescope. And then he'd come out the next night and find that it hadn't moved. So he would write it down as basically a nuisance to be readily ignored. So that's how the list of Messier objects came about. And how where we got where we get our ever popular Messier list. And there there are no Messier objects in Leo Minor. So what we're gonna do we are going to find one double star in Leo Minor, and that is Beta Leonis Minoris. Let's turn our boundaries on again. This is a tough one. Let's do a search. Yeah, I was close. Now, let's see if beta is, let's see if it's a splittable double star through our finder scope. Doesn't look like it. So let's have a look through the eyepiece. And I'm not seeing it come across as a splittable double star here either. No, it must be a, there. Wow, it really finally does separate. You have to get really close to it. Yeah, you can just see it start to split there. It must really be a tight double. Okay, this concludes my tour of Leo Minor. Good night and good seeing.